In this presentation, we will discuss options for entering adjusting journal entries into our system, adjusting journal entries that were entered by the tax preparer, by the CPA firm, or accounting firm, which we, they used in order to create the taxes or make the financial statement at year end based on the numbers we gave them. Our question now is, do we want to enter those information in, if so, how into our bookkeeping system going forward in the future? For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. The first option is, of course, no, we, we could not enter the entries that were adjusted at the year end by the tax preparation or the accounting firm or CPA firm. And this might be the case if we have a small client where basically they're just doing tax preparation at the end of the time period. If that's the case, then it might be the case that the tax preparation might not have very good adjusting journal entries. They might, in essence, be taking the uh, profit and loss statement and making adjustments to it to report the Schedule C, which is basically just an income statement, on the proper basis, on a tax basis, so that they can record the tax return. If we're doing more full service, it would be nice if we had some, uh, we were working with an accounting firm that did uh, the adjusting entries so that uh, we can see those adjusting entries more than just uh, adjusting the tax return but we might have the case where that that's what it is and if that is the case then what we do is we just make sure that we keep entering the data each year in essence making the income statement right as correct as possible and the balance sheet then is not going to be adjusted from year to year we're going to use QuickBooks in other words to have that balancing effect because everything in QuickBooks will be in balance that's the benefit of using QuickBooks we'll still reconcile but we're really only using the income statement size, which is the timing side, in order to give for tax preparation at the end of the time period. Our next option is to get the adjusting entries to enter manually. And we've seen the Excel worksheet we have here. Now, it'd be nice if we work with a, an accounting firm that would just give us those adjusting entries that they used in their adjusting entry worksheet. If they don't use QuickBooks and they use some other system like Excel, they can print out those adjusting entries. They're just going to be journal entries no matter what system that is used, and we could take that information and then enter it into the system. Not all accounting firms, not all CPA firms are going to be willing to do that. One, because they don't, possibly they don't want to give their working papers out that they're working on, uh, even though they're the adjusting entries and they can help us in the process. And two, maybe they're not making the, the very complex working papers that would adjust the whole service if, again, we're just talking about the tax preparation might not be there. So work, work with who you're working with, and if they have that option, it's great to do that because then you can kind of learn what adjustments they're making, and you can just make a better relationship between the two of you to make that cutoff point as easy as possible for the year-end. The easier you make the year-end information for the CPA firm or the tax preparation, the more clients they're probably going to point our way uh, as well, and so it's a good relationship to have. So the other way is if they're making the adjustments with QuickBooks, we might give them the QuickBooks file and they can make the adjustment in QuickBooks. Now, if they do that, we really have two options. They can give us a report from QuickBooks, similar to the report in Excel, which would actually, which would give us the journal entries that we can manually input, or they can make a backup file from QuickBooks and we can just keep the backup file. Now, note that if they do give us a backup file, we want to be careful that we know what they did so that we, we don't have any problems going forward. We, we should be okay because we are still just going to be on a cash basis for the new time period going forward. Whatever adjustments they made shouldn't be affecting those temporary accounts, and we can do what we need to do going forward, uh, even if we don't fully understand the journal entries they made. However, we also have to be careful that we don't make any adjustments while they have the data. So if we give them the data in... Uh, January or February or March or whatever, and they get the tax return done in April, that month time period is a time period if we expect to get the file from them back again, unless we do some accounting copy or something like that. But if they if we expect to get the file back, we, we want to make sure that we're not erasing the data that we are inputting. So the safest way to do that is to say, okay, here's the copy. If you make adjustments and I plan on entering them back into my system, then I want you to just give me a copy again when I get it back and I won't do anything in the interim because I don't want to lose any data through that transfer process. So just be aware of that. And obviously when you get it back too, you might want to restore it to a different area 
just so you have your files that you originally had in the in the restored file in case anything uh, unusual happens during that restoration process. So let's take a look at a couple of these. First is the worksheet here. So if we have the worksheet and they just gave you the Excel worksheet, we're not really looking at all this stuff. We're, what we're doing is basically entering this information into QuickBooks. We would just enter this information as journal entries into QuickBooks. And the way to do that in QuickBooks is just go, go to QuickBooks. We would go to the company and financial as we've seen in the past and make journal entries. And they would all be as of the end of the time period, as of the end of the year in this case. And so, and once we're done, we can compare that then our adjusted trial balance to what is here. Note that the order of the trial balance may be different because it, they might be entering new accounts here. And if we have to enter any new accounts, then uh, it might be in different order because of, of alphabetical order versus whatever they put in place here. But it should be in the same kind of order in terms of assets, liabilities, and equity type of accounts. So that's one method they can use. And they might just give you just this, and that, that would be enough to do, but it would be nice to check the numbers here. So we would want the trial balance, the ending trial balance to enter that. So, and again, we don't have to enter it. We could not do it and say, hey, I mean, if it's just tax preparation at the end of the year, then uh, we would really want the income statement. And these are all temporary. They're going to go to zero anyways. We're going to start over in essence. So then the other way we can do it is they could give you a QuickBooks report or a report from QuickBooks say they use QuickBooks to make the adjustment and they don't we don't want to get the QuickBooks file possibly because we want to work in the interim or something like that then and, and or we want to check the, the entries and make sure we know what we're entering in our system then they could give us a, a, a report from here which we then could use to enter manually as well so any other database system they use we can do that QuickBooks, the report would look something like this. And if we do the adjusting entries ourselves or do some adjusting entries at the end of the time period, you can have this similar report to, to see the, your adjusting entries versus the rest of the data. So that's under reports. You can go to the accounting and taxes. And then we're going to go to the transaction detail, not by uh, account, but by date. So we want the transaction list by date so transaction list by date and then we're going to change the date range from i, I just want the end of the year because they're all as of december so 12 31 1 9 is when they all should be as of so 12 31 1 9 and there's going to be a list of our transactions and this will give us the account and the the information this will give us the memo and the account and the split. It's not giving us all the detail for the split. So this is a good one just to note kind of the, the journal entries, but uh, another report that would be nice to see the full journal entry in a report is in reports and then accounting and taxes, and it's called journal. And we'll say, okay. And it's for 12, 31, same end of the time period, one nine, all of our journal entries are as of the cutoff date. And now, all of these happen to be journal entries here. If anything was here that wasn't a journal entry, then you could filter this as well, meaning you could go to the, so for example, just to show you, if I went to 010119, then I have all this other stuff that's going on here that I don't want to see. I just want to see journal entries. So we could then go to Customize Reports, Filter, all the way down here to, uh, we're looking for a transaction type. So we want to filter by transaction type. There, there it is. And then we're looking for journals. So the transaction type is going to be a journal that we want. So transaction type, journal, and then OK. And that'll filter it down to just these types of transactions, journals. And basically, we're not entering any journals into the system other than the end of the period. So they should be all adjusting journal entries. And if we put this nice little memo here, that tells us what type of entry it is or if, or if the accounting department did, they can do that. Helpful. And then here are the accounts. So if, if the adjusting department or if the tax preparation or the accountant uses QuickBooks to make the adjustment and we don't want to restore their data file, they can give us a report like this and they could say, hey, these are the adjustments we made. And then we can manually input this into our system in the same format, the debit and credit format by going to uh, the company make journal entry and so so whatever system the accountants use if they're using full service debit and credits they can basically give us that information whether it be from a quickbooks report excel whatever system they're using they should be able to give us that however 
again, if they're using just taxes and just kind of changing the income statement and, and making the adjustments they need to, to the income statement side and not the balance sheet side, not full journal entries, then they're probably not going to have the information we need to make any kind of adjustment for adjusting entries. And if that's the case and we just need it for taxes, then we'll just keep going forward and, and entering the data on a cash basis system and providing them what they need to make those adjustments at the end of the time period. If, however, at some point, you're probably going to have a, a client that needs a loan or needs something like that, and they're going to need more full service financial statements, that's when the tax preparer we're working with, hopefully they can, if, if you're working with a CPA firm or something, then, or an accounting firm, then they could do the financial statements at that point, which means they would need more full service to get the balance sheet and income statement information. And it's good to be working with someone, if possible, that can uh, do the do the full adjustments when needed uh, to make the financial statements. Because most even most small businesses, hopefully, they're going to grow at some point. And when they do, the owner is going to want uh, could want loan for personal use for homes and this and that. And they might want financing to grow the business as well. And when that happens, you're going to be wanting to work with someone that can provide those needs to provide basically an accrual basis financial statement that might be necessary for things like loan approval or anything like that or if some more investments to the company if they want to get more uh, investments from others and whatnot they're going to need more complete financial statements for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info